grab your Bible. If you have your Bible, let me see it, okay? I want you to be bringing your Bible. If you don't have one, there's one right in front of, uh, in front of you, perhaps in the, in the seat. You can take that. You can borrow it. If you don't have one at home, take it home. Let it be a gift from us to you. Grab a pen. Get ready to write a few things down. Your notes that were passed to you when you came through the door. As some of you were here last Sunday. You know, we started a brand new series that we're calling You Need New Friends. Uh, last week, we answered the question, why? Why do you need new friends? Because you got lousy ones now? No. Uh, there's a purpose behind it. There's a reason behind it, and we talked about that last week. But uh, today, we're talking about the how. How to go about getting new friends. What it really is all about here this morning. So let's, uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, thank you um, again for uh, so often taking us out of our comfort zones and, and taking us to those places where we have meaning and purpose in life, uh, where we discover the reason why, why you've left us here for a little while on this earth. And Father, I, I just pray that, that this week, even more so than last week, that we'll be alert, where our eyes will be open, and we'll realize that uh, there, there are no accidents, just these opportunities. Uh, where you bring people into our life so that we can uh, befriend them, so we can get to know them, so that you can use us some way, somehow, to help bring them into your kingdom. Uh, Father, last week we, we wrote a bunch of names down, and, and we've been praying over those. Father, I, I just right now continue to pray over those specific people, those people that you've, you've put in our lives, those names that you brought to our minds. Uh, I pray that, that, that they uh, will not be able to, to resist your call on their life, but instead they will come, they will find you, they will, they will hear the good news of your son Jesus Christ, what has been done for us, and the life that we can have with you. you know, we thank you so much for choosing us, a people like us, to do the great things that you are doing. And so we thank you again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <laughs> Two applications. I put two applications in, only two applications. It was my second year of college, just starting out. I had moved back to this area. I needed a job. So I found two different places, and I put two applications in. One place hired me, the other one didn't. The first application that I filled out, I walked it through the front door, and... The lady in the front, she said, uh, how can I help you? I said, I've got an application uh, I'd like to submit. And she said, thank you. And I walked out and never heard from them again. That was the GBI, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. <laughs> I was a college student. I thought to myself, how cool would it be to be a GBI agent? That's what I really want to do. I want to be an agent. It'd be cool to be a secret agent. Yeah. Who doesn't want to be a secret agent? I mean, I grew up, I loved, I loved 007, man. I love the James Bond movies. I, uh, my favorite TV shows are things like uh, The A-Team and Miami Vice. Ah, man, if I could be somebody like that, somebody who, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, more modern is Jason Bourne. Who doesn't like Jason Bourne? Yeah. If I could be that. I still kind of have that desire and that dream, and I think it would be so very cool, but that was not the path that God had for me. And so the GBI did not call me back. I did get a call back from Chick-fil-A, however. <laughs> and so instead of being a GBI agent, I began to work at Chick-fil-A. And it was interesting because that kind of did set me on a path to be... Um, in a weird sort of way, a completely different type of agent. I, I think God had in mind, Bo, you're not going to be an agent for the GBI, but instead you're going to be an agent for me. You, uh, I'm, I'm going to take you uh, down, this, down this path that, that maybe you never dreamed of or thought of or wanted even to be there, but I'm going to take you here, and, and, and you will be an agent for me. And, and, and in a weird sort of way, it's almost as if I am a secret agent. It's almost as if even you are a secret agent, a secret agent for God. 
you might say, what are you talking about? Secret agent for God? What do you mean? Yes, God has chosen you. He's chosen me. Uh, to be that agent for him in a world that is lost, in a world that, that is dying, in a world that's going to hell. And he said, no, 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 you're going to work for me. And this is how we're going to do it. You're going you're gonna to get to know people. You're going to befriend people. You're, you're going you're gonna to meet needs. You're going to reach into their life. And you're going you're gonna to have that opportunity. You're going to be at that place where you will be able to share the good news of what I have done for humanity through my son Jesus. You're going to be an agent for me. I know some of you are going, that seems a little far-fetched. That, I don't know. Where, where do you find that in God's word? Well, it's, it's here. It is here. It's here. It's, it begins in Proverbs 18, 24. Look what it says. A man who has friends must himself be friendly. The second part of that verse, some of you might know it. It says, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. What is being said right there? So often we take that verse and we, we quickly interpret it to mean, well, if you, if you want to have friends, then you got to be friendly. That's a true statement. That is a true statement. But I think it, it's a little more than that right here. In fact, some of your translations read that friends come and friends go. But there's a, bro there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. What's going on right here? It's the, it's the type of friend that is intentional. It's the type of friend with a purpose. It's a friend that is active in their friend's life to make a difference. It's not a friend who's just, yeah. They come, they go, in, out, don't really care much about you, just want a friend. No, there's a friend with a purpose here. Uh, Paul describes this, I think, really well in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Starting in verse 19, look what happens. Even though, Paul says, I am free of the demands and expectations of everyone. Uh, let's stop right there. You know what he's doing right there? He, he's making a very clear distinction between, between being a friend with purpose and being a People pleaser. How many of you know what I mean when I say people pleaser? Huh? How, many, how many of you will be honest enough today uh, to say that sometimes uh, I get caught in the trap of trying to please people? Yeah, we do, don't we? We do. Why? Because we, we want people to like us. We want friends. What we would call friends. I want people to like me, and so, so I have that need. I, I, want, I, I want that. I want that approval in my life, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and, and do as much over here and try to please these people and do as much as I can over here try to please. I just, my life is consumed with that, and that's, it ends up being a very sick way of living. And Paul is saying, that's not it. That's not it. He, he says, even though I'm free of the demands and expectations of everyone, I've been set free in Jesus Christ. I don't have to live that way anymore. Instead, I live listening to him, and I want to please him. I want him to be the one who guides and directs what I do in life. But, but he says, even though I'm free of the demands and the expectations of everyone, I have voluntarily become a servant. And, and I just wrote out the word secret agent right there. I have voluntarily become a servant slash secret agent to any and all in order to reach a wide range of people. Do you see the purpose coming out? Those religious, the non-religious, the meticulous moralist, the loose living immoralist, the defeated, the demoralized, whoever. I didn't take on their way of life. Don't, don't confuse that. Instead, he says, I kept my bearings in Christ, but... I entered their world and tried to experience things from their point of view. I've become just about every sort of servant, secret agent, there is in my attempts to lead those I meet into a God-saved life. I did all this because of the message. I didn't just want to talk about it. I wanted to be in on it. Hey, do you see what's going on? You see how cool that is? I, I have a good friend, and, and this guy is a master, a master at becoming somebody's friend so that maybe one day God will use him 
into leading them into a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's the coolest thing ever. It's the coolest thing ever when you see somebody do that. And I think, man, that's a cool secret agent. They're, they're so in disguise. You just don't notice. You don't see it. You know, one of the, one of the things I, I love is uh, getting in a conversation with somebody and we start talking, and they're just free to say whatever, and they say some things that, that uh, you might not say here in church or whatever, you know, but they're talking like that with me, and I'm talking back with them. And finally, they get around to the question. They say, so what do you do for a living? And I say, well, I'm, I'm a pastor. And that's when they start confessing to me, right? I, I'm sorry. Hey, man, all that stuff I said before, we're good, right? And I said, man, don't worry about it. It's okay. It's all right. It's good, you know? And then the next thing they, they ask is, you're a pastor? And I like that, you're a pastor? I, I like that surprise. It's, it's like I'm, I'm secretly a pastor. I don't look like a lot of pastors. I'm, I'm in disguise, man. I'm in disguise. I am the Jason Bourne of pastors. And, and, and I like that. I like that because I, I want to be able to talk with people freely. Just right where they're at, to really, to really get to know them, to be their friend, to be that secret agent, and you, and you. To, to live in such a way, us, live in such a way that we realize this, this huge purpose that God has given to us. We, we understand what, what he wants us to be about and what he wants us to be doing. Life suddenly has real purpose and meaning. As every one of us lives out this secret agent, God-given life, to make a difference in those around us. I want you, I want to challenge you to be that friend with a purpose. And specifically, I'm going to challenge you in these four areas. I, I say challenge you, but please understand, when I say challenge you, it's challenging to me. And you're going to see why I say that, Okay. But here together, we should be challenged to be these kinds of friends. First of all, write this down. How to be a friend with purpose, number one. Befriend people that God has put near me. I need to be about befriending or be a friend to those people that God has put near me. Now, just real quick, run that through your mind. Who are the people that God has put near me? Who are the people that God has, has brought into my life? Not by accident. We, said, we talked about this last week, okay? Not by accident, but just simply as an opportunity for you to share with them the good news. Who are the people that God has put around you? And so, so automatically we, we, we go towards neighbors, um, next door neighbors, back door neighbors, front door neighbors, uh, two doors down neighbors, people in the neighborhood neighbors. Maybe, maybe you think that way. Is there anybody that maybe God has stuck there? For, for the whole purpose that one day you guys will talk and you'll meet and, 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 and your dogs will play together or something, you know, and you can say, hey, you know what, so-and-so, uh, uh, we, we go over here to church and we'd love for you to come and be a part of this and, and come visit with us one Sunday, you know? To be that, to be that, to begin to be that friend, the people in your neighborhood. Uh, other neighbors, what are, who are other neighbors? Um, uh, the people who you work with, the people who, who, are, who are two offices down. One floor up, two floors down. The people that, that come in once a week to carry out your packages. Who, who, who are those neighbors that God has put into your life as an opportunity? Or maybe it's the person you sit next to in class. Or the person that you meet on, on the bus on the way to class every time you go to class. Who are those neighbors? The people who come and, and shop at your business once or twice a week. Who are those neighbors? Those people. Look what it says. Love your neighbor as yourself. You guys know this. Jesus, Jesus says the first and greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. But then the second is like unto it to love your neighbor as yourself. They, the two go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. And when, when you actually show that love to that neighbor, indeed, you end up expressing love to God because you love what he loves. And somebody asked the question after, after Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. They said, okay, okay, come on. Define my neighbor. Who then is my neighbor? And you remember the story, and Jesus tells the story. It's one of the most told stories throughout, throughout the um, New Testament 
And there was this man, he was beat up by some, he was robbed, and he was left for dead on the road. And what happens, well, well, well this, this one priest comes by, and, and when he starts walking by, just that, he's in that area, down the road, what does he do? He goes out of his way to get away from him, to avoid him. Goes on the other side, because, you know what, I got stuff I got to do. I, I've got an agenda, you got to understand that, I mean, business is business, and I got I to gotta go with this hard. I got to run. In fact, I don't have time to talk with people about Jesus at work while I'm working. And, and, and eventually, eventually, uh, the Samaritan, that's why it's called the Good Samaritan, comes, and he doesn't step away. He, he begins to minister to, this, to his neighbor. Jesus says, there, that's your neighbor, that's your neighbor. Is there anybody, anybody that God has, 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 has set in your path that you know, you're going to see him probably this week, that's set in your path that he says, I, I want you to befriend that person. I want you to be a friend to that one. Everybody else might, might try to avoid him, but not you. Remember, remember, you're my secret agent. I want you to be their friend. Man, I'm, I'm so excited. You know why I'm so excited? Um, if you were here last Sunday, you know what we did. Uh, I, we, we all wrote a name down on a card, right? And, uh, and we, we took all these cards, just a, a first name. And, and it was uh, together with the staff this last week. We prayed over those names individually. Went through that. We were praying that God would use us specifically to, to reach the, the people on this card, the names on this card. Well, cool. His so cool. It's so cool because I just found out the person on my card, the name that I put down, I, I, I run into her once a week, once a week. We have conversations, we talk. It, it's kind of interesting. I know, I know she, she, she needs to hear about Jesus. But, but we started talking, uh, sharing things about life. Um, we just once a week, I know I'm going gonna, I know I'm gonna to see her. And, uh, and so that was my name. That was my name. And, and everybody's praying for her. And, and what was so cool, I asked her, I said, why don't, you come to, why don't you come to church with me on Easter? You know what's amazing about this? You know what's so amazing about this? She calls me her pastor, and she's never yet come to church. <laughs> and, and she goes, and I asked her, she, she goes, you know what? I just might surprise you. And she goes, get this, she goes, and I might bring somebody with me. How cool is that, huh? So I'm ready. I'm pumped, man. Easter Sunday. And then she goes, now where is this church at? I had to, I had to give her direction. Oh, yeah, I know where that is then. How cool is that, huh? And that, that, that's my, I, I, don't know, I don't know you and your name, but, but we're still praying, okay? We're still praying for those names. We're still praying. But I thought, how, that's just awesome. That's just awesome. Our neighbors, those people that God has, has put in our path. I get, I, I don't know, probably some of you have asked me this. Have asked me the question recently. I get, I get it a lot now. Hey, Pastor Bo, what do you think about the shopping mall that's about to go in across the street from you? Now, all of you, I'm sure, have heard about this, right? Just right there. Big shopping development um, with big stores and all this, you know. And, and, and I think sometimes people are going, what, what are you, are you going to be upset about that? Uh, because of the traffic, you know, a lot of traffic. Nobody likes traffic. I don't like traffic. But you know what I, you know what I say? I said, I am pumped about it. I am, I am so excited about it. I said, you know why I'm so excited about it? Because what, what I see it is, uh, to me, it's God has expanded the vision and ministry of Community Bible Church to include a shopping mall and a movie theater and a, I can't say all the names of the places that are coming, and apartments. In other words, God is expanding the Community Bible Church campus at a cost of $300 million, and it's not going to cost this church a penny. That's awesome, isn't it? And already uh, the pastors here, we're strategizing, we're, we're planning. What can we do? 
What can we do to, to be the good neighbor and reach all those people that God says, you know what, I'm just going to bring them right here. I'm going to bring them all right here so this church can be a light, that city on a hill. Befriend the people that God has put near me. Number two, befriend people that are needy and have no other friends. Befriend people that are needy and even those who have no other friends. Uh, that can be difficult just, just from the outset. You know why? It might cost us a little something. It might, it, that, that one can be difficult um, from, from what we just look at it because, because usually people who have no friends, nobody, nobody wants to be their friend maybe for a reason. And it's for me to befriend those people that are needy and even those that have no friends. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to be a friend to the person that nobody else likes? Are you, are you willing to be a friend to the person that, that everybody makes fun of behind their back? Because now they might start talking about you. Are you willing to be that, that kind of friend? Are you willing to, to befriend somebody who uh, you can't really expect anything from? Because they've got nothing to give. You want to be that kind of friend. Here's a show, the TV. I've never seen an episode of it. Uh, I just know it's extremely popular. Everybody loves it. Uh, it's called Walking Dead. Y'all know it, right? A lot of people like that show. Yeah, I just always find it really fascinating, you know? Um, because I, I think... We might not be too far from that. You, you know what I mean by that? Every day I walk around and I see people and I go, they're dead. <laughs> they're dead. Do you do that? Yeah, there's just no life, man. There's no life in them. There's just nothing there. There's no joy. There's no peace. No love. There's none of the things of God there. They are dead, man. They're dead, and it's sad. It's sad. It's sad, but you know what? It's also an opportunity. How cool is it that, that, it, that the secret agents that we are, God, God has said, I, I've, I've, gotten, I've given to you the very thing that they need. And every time you and I see a need, instead of seeing it as just as a need, we see it now as an opportunity where I can share with them the very thing that can bring life to their, to their deadness. Look at this verse, man. This is such a good verse. Such a good verse. Matthew 25, starting in verse 35. For I was hungry and you fed me. You, you, you ever think about that person at the office who suddenly goes in to the hospital and they're sick and, and you go and you buy Chick-fil-A for them so they don't have to eat the nasty hospital food. You take it to them. You're being their friend. You're being their friend. They're in need and you meet a need. I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. That person had just moved into the neighborhood. Did you, you think about maybe welcoming them and, and taking them a, a bottle of wine and not that cheap box stuff you have in your fridge? <laughs> and saying, I just, just want to be your friend. Welcome. Glad you're here. Instead of every day just going home and shutting up our doors and not seeing anybody in the neighborhood. I was a stranger. And you invited me into your home. I was naked. You gave me clothing. I was sick. And you cared for me. I was sick and you, you cared for me. Or that, that single mom who is just exhausted, sick, and tired. She's working 
two jobs just trying to stay afloat and she doesn't have time to get out and cut her grass like the neighborhood wants her to cut her grass. But you, but you, you're out there cutting your grass and you quickly run over there with your lawnmower and cut hers to be that friend, to be that friend. I was in prison and you visited me. I've been to prison a few times. <laughs> to visit. <laughs> I remember this one time I went, this one time I went, um, uh, I, I, I get up to the little window there and the, the guard there uh, says, sir, you got to sign in. Who are you? And then he looks up and he goes, hey, Pastor Bo. I said, hey, good to see you, man. He goes, uh, yeah, 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 it'll be great. You can come on in, you can visit, so forth, and just do this and this. And he goes, and here's what's going to happen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buzz this door open, and you walk through this door, and then I'm going to buzz, uh, or shut that door behind you, and then I'm going to buzz the next door, and you have to walk through that door. And so I went through all this stuff and went through this door, and <laughs> closed behind me. <laughs> Other door <laughs> opens up, buzz through there. And then I just I start walking down the hall according to the directions where he told me uh, I needed to go to sit down and meet with the, the person that I was going to see. And it was interesting because I, I'm walking down the hallway and I look down, I look down this long hallway and I see a bunch of, a group of guys down there standing out in the hallway. And next thing I know, one of the guys yells at me, Pastor Bo! I'm like, hey, man, what you been up to? Oh, bad. Bad question. <laughs> He goes, not much. <laughs> good. good to see you. Walked a little bit further. See, see another group of guys. Hey, Pastor Bo. And, and then in my mind, I'm going, I know why church has been a little low lately in attendance. Here. Like, <laughs> but, you know, it went through all this stuff, and, and I, I left the place, and it just hit me. It just hit me. How cool, how awesome is it that, that we have a church where people who have been to prison feel like they're at home here. Do you know what I mean by that? They, 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 can, they can feel at home here. They can feel loved here. They can feel like they have friends here. They can be a part here. How cool is that? Do you find that to be really cool? I had the privilege of doing a funeral a few weeks ago. I say privilege, and I mean privilege. Um, young man died, car wreck. And uh, went to at the funeral home. It was interesting to me to watch all of his friends walk in. And wow, did he have a lot of friends. I packed the place out. People was just standing up all over because there was not enough room. And I, I get up and I preach this funeral, and it hits me, it hits me while I'm preaching that this right here is probably the only chance I'll ever get to speak to his friends. And I can tell they're, they're not church people. They're not church people. But because he was their friend, because he was their friend, a lot of people who you would say were on the margin, because he was their friend, I was able to give the good news, the gospel, to that whole crowd of people. How cool is that? Isn't that awesome? Yeah, he was a secret agent. A secret agent. Making friends. To people who, who, who needed a friend. Number three, you're really not going to like this one. Befriend people that don't like me. I know some of you just want to scratch that one off, right? Befriend people that don't like me. I, I know you guys, you're going to find this hard to believe. You're going to find this so hard to believe. But there are actually some people that don't like me. Actually, a lot of people that don't like me now that I think about it. Yeah. 
people that don't like me. Do you have people that don't like you? How many? Anybody in here is liked by everybody? Yeah, probably not. If, if, if you raise your hand, you're probably a liar, and now nobody likes you, okay? <laughs> but uh, befriend people that don't like me? Hmm. How do you take it when somebody doesn't like you? I don't know about you, but my, my natural inclination is, well, I just, who needs you, right? Or uh, you know, ice them out. Be mean back. If they if they really don't like me, if they're saying mean things about me, doing things to me, man, I just wanna I wanna, you know, Chuck Norris them or something. <laughs> That's what I wanna do. But what do you do? Can you actually befriend people? Choose to be a friend to people who don't like you? How in the world can you possibly do that? I want you to write two quick things in the margins, okay? Think about that person who doesn't like you and whatever it is why they might not like you. But, but think about that person that doesn't like you. And, and, and I want you to look at this in one of two ways. Uh, number one, it simply might mean that you deserve them for them not to like you. You ever think that? And that's when you kind of do a quick, wait a second. Now, what have I done wrong in this relationship that they don't like me? Am I wrong there? And if, if I am wrong there, then it means that I need to go and spend some time talking with them and making things right with them and own up to what I've done. So number one, it's either that I deserved it, but if it's not that I deserved it, then number two, maybe God can use it. Maybe God can get some glory out of it. Same thing happened to Joseph. Remember that? Brothers didn't like him. What happens? Yeah, he gets sold into slavery. Gets accused of things he never did. Gets thrown into prison. And then finally, God brings him up to the second highest place in all of the kingdom. And his brothers one day have to come back to him, begging for food. And they're afraid for their lives. And his response to them was, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. You might have meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. For such a time as this, God gets the glory. If there are people in your life who don't like you and it's nothing that you have done, then simply turn to God and say, God, use it. Get some glory out of it. And it completely then changes your perspective of that person. Because in the same way that God has forgiven me as his enemy, in my sin, I can forgive them. I don't have to carry around that burden of bitterness each and every day of my life anymore. How cool is that? It says it right here. Matthew 5, verse 43. You have heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, Jesus here, Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. You got somebody in your life that you can start praying for today? Ah, it's tough. I know it's tough. Oh, it's, so, it, it's tough to do, man. It's tough. You start praying for that person, your prayer starts out, oh God, please smite them, you know? No, 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 no that's not a good one. But you start praying for good for them. God, God touch them, help them, heal them. You start looking for ways where you can be kind to them. Maybe you send them a card. Maybe you send them a gift card. <clears throat> that hurts, doesn't it? But you start doing it anyway. Because remember, you're that secret agent representing him. And then number four, befriend people 
that need Jesus. Befriend people that need Jesus. There's a, there's a video, a five-minute video that uh, I'd like you to watch, and you'll recognize the guy in the video. His name is Penn of Penn and Teller. But uh, I thought this was a very, very revealing video for us to be able to watch. So we got that? Can you run it? Don't you love that God has secret agents all over? Um, John 15, 12. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. You ever, you ever wrestle with that? I ever um, feel like, man, I, I just don't know if I... Uh, how much would you have to hate somebody not to? To, 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 to be at that place to, to really just love people. To love people that much. I, I, I remember years ago um, asking, asking God, I, I said, God, let me, let me feel what you feel for people. Let me, let me know what kind of love you, you have for people. And sometimes I, I just don't think I get it. I don't think I understand. Let me feel what, what you feel for people. And it was, it was kind of weird because... Uh, sitting in my backyard on the steps of my back porch and, and, uh, and I saw a, uh, a cardinal, a female cardinal um, just, you're just swooping down real fast at something in the yard over and over like that just swooping down like that, you know I, I kind of had an idea what was up and what was happening sure enough, next thing I know uh, kind of coming up over this little hill um, I see our dachshund, our, our dog, Max. But in Max's mouth, you can tell he has a little baby bird. And, and, and it, yeah, I could tell it was over. It was already done. You know, Max uh, sat there right on the sidewalk and just, you know, chewed and chewed. And, and then it was a weird thing because I watched this, I, I watched this mama bird and just sit in the branch just over him, and she just was watching like that. And it was weird because in that second, I just had this, ah, for, for this poor mom who's watching uh, this beast chew up her baby. And, and it was weird because as I'm watching that, it was, it was like God said, there, there, there. Uh, it's 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 uh, to to watch Satan having his way, this beast, with so many people that God loves, and uh, and it's like there. And all oh, that we would have that that heaviness on our hearts. For, for people whom God loves so much, that heaviness that would, would move us and would drive us, it would, it, it would, it would keep us from, 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 from complacency. It would not let us stand for us being people sitting in our comfort zones. It would, it would drive us out. It would, it would, it would cause us to, to do anything and everything that we could to be those friends so that we can Bring people to Jesus. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And Jesus says, listen here, you are my friends if you do what I command. The command, love, love. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. Last Sunday, I, I, I ended by telling you a story. One of the worst stories ever. I'm going to tell you another story. It's going to sound similar. But this, the story goes like this. You die. And, and you go to heaven. 
and you enter into heaven, and, and like, I, like I told last, told you last week, it's just it's like a party you can't even imagine. I mean, the music, remember that? The place is really happening, and you are so excited to be there. And sure enough, there's Jesus, and, and, and you see Jesus, and, and he goes, oh, wow, it's so great that you're here. I'm so happy to see you. And, and you're like, this is incredible. Thank you so much. I love, this is awesome. I'm so happy to be here. But this is where the story changes. You see, this story ends with Jesus, with, with, with Jesus looking at you and saying, hey, 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 you haven't seen nothing yet. In fact, look, look here, look behind me, and, and you look, and there are miles and miles, a sea of people who are, who are, who are there to welcome you and to greet you and to say thank you for, for being my friend because of you, I am in heaven today. And Jesus, Jesus says, well done, my good and faithful secret agent. For great is your reward. Come on in. Let's found a word of prayer. Who will be in heaven because of you? Father, I pray that we would be those people understanding how serious it is and we will be active moving starting today anywhere and everywhere even going to lunch when, 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 we're, when, we're on, when we're on social media the phone call that we have to make the people we have to speak to this week that we will be those people your agents making a difference in as many people's lives as we can. Father, Easter Sunday's coming up. Next week, the, the one time out of the year when most people will agree and say, okay, I'll come, I'll be there. Let us not miss that opportunity, that chance, but let us have somebody, have somebody with us sitting next to us who can hear the good news, the message, the gospel that will change their eternal destiny. We love you. We thank you. We praise you for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Hey, Pastor Glenn's here, and he's going to help us with... Hey, did... We'll do that. I, Pastor Bo, great I got this card. This morning. Yes. These little cards. Did you, did you guys get these cards? Okay, great. This is... Um, we, what we want people to do is take these, and it's an easy way to... Hand it to somebody and say, hey, we want you to come to Easter services with us next week, right? That's right. I think Good there's deal. two so or three so in every, every bulletin. So uh, that's a great way to invite a friend to come to church. Um, Easter weekend, we'll have things going on all weekend. Good Friday, mm -hmm. we'll have a, uh, a Passover um, celebration here with a guy from Jews for Jesus. It's a phenomenal presentation. So come and bring a friend. Mm -hmm. Um, sat also, there'll be kids' things going on in the gym that night, so you oh, okay. bring the whole family. Saturday, we'll have extravaganza. We still accept eggs and shells for eggs. Last I heard, we were about 30,000 of them, right? 30,000. That was the last I heard. Okay, so we, we still got about 20,000 to go. Yes. But people are bringing them in, and groups are getting together and having parties and stuffing eggs, right? That's right. That's right. Pretty Keep cool. seeing things on social media, people sitting around with plastic eggs, putting candy in them. So that's awesome. Um, and then Sunday morning, um, we'll have an 8 o'clock service. And, and at Easter, it is packed around here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it is packed. So um, if, if you want to avoid some of the large crowds that are here at 9, 30, and 11, you might want to come at 8 o'clock yeah. for the sunrise service. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll have communion at that time as well. Yeah, and or you, can, you can even come at 8 o'clock and then help serve in some of the other areas that are needed uh, in the other hours. That would help us out a lot. Of that would well. be awesome. So uh, 8 o'clock and then the regular 9, 30, and 11 o'clock. And then the following week, we will have baptisms. And so uh, if you haven't been baptized yet, uh, we'd love to do that uh, for you. And it'll be on the uh, 3rd of April, right after Easter. So uh, a lot of great things happen in the next couple weeks. Very good. Appreciate that, Pastor Glenn. You guys ready to take the offering? All right. Good deal.
Father, we thank you so much for today and, and uh, just uh, we, we've been in praise and worshiping you. Uh, I just pray that we'll continue on in our giving right now, that you'll be honored and glorified in how we give by the condition of our heart as we give. We thank you so much for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.